Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simeon, and joining me on the line once again is Mike Stavrou. Mike, welcome back to the show. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm just catching some grief from uh, some of our loyal listeners, but you, you know, you know, Harry, debate is uh, makes us all better, makes us learn. So I'm, I'm all for it. Absolutely, absolutely right. So at the time of recording, we're of course looking ahead to Arsenal's trip to Goodison Park at the weekend. Now. We would have hoped that Mikel Arteta would have been appointed as the Arsenal head coach by now. That's why we delayed putting this out till Friday, but it's not been the case. There's been a bit of a delay. It's understood that Arteta has agreed terms with Arsenal, but that Manchester City and Arsenal are yet to agree on the compensation. Um, And apparently Manchester City's demands are holding the deal up. However... Barring a complete catastrophe, we expect him to be named the Arsenal manager this week. So we're going to talk as if uh, Mikel Arteta has been appointed, because that's what we believe is going to happen. Um, Mike, first of all, we've spoken about the Arteta thing before. We spoke about it on the last podcast. We spoke about the fact that it might be the right way to go. He's a progressive young coach, and fingers crossed, you know, we can get the maximum out of him and he can help turn Arsenal around. Um, But... Even going into this game, it is very difficult, isn't it, to predict or to to preview it in any depth because, of course, we don't know who's going to be in charge of both sides. We know Duncan Ferguson will remain in charge of Everton uh, with Carlo Ancelotti waiting to take over there. We expect Freddie Lundberg will be in charge for Arsenal, but it's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? I mean, how do you get the players going knowing that they're going to have a change of manager probably after this game? Yeah, it's a weird one, Harry. Do you know what else is weird? It's some of these stories coming out about um, apparently Aubameyang and, and half the squad won out. Have you have you heard those? Yeah, I have. I know I was going to ask you about that, but let, let's start there. So, what have you made of the reports? And uh, you know, it's a bit it's a bit childish, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the whole thing. I, I think it started uh, earlier this week with Willie Aubameyang, Aubameyang's brother, uh, commenting saying on on Instagram post saying, "Oh, Arteta doesn't have the experience." But that is just, uh, I, I think he's got something to do with, is it, it, he might not be his agent, but I think he deals with a lot of uh, Bamiya. Um, that is just unbelievable. Like, how, how, how can that be allowed to happen? Like, family as, as agents can never be allowed. And we've seen it with Marko Arnautovic, but like, just get behind the guy. Like, this is one of our star strikers, a golden, joint golden boot in the last, last year. I mean, It's shocking scenes, really. I couldn't quite believe it. More shocking than that is he's the Arsenal captain at the moment. And you just think that, you know, number one, it's wrong, it's unhelpful. But number two, you know, surely you've got to keep your own house in order there if you're Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. How that can be helpful, having your brother say such things. And your brother's in the public light as well, you know. He's not somebody who's hiding in the shadows. He goes on Instagram, he has his say, sparks a load of controversy. If players want to leave at the end of the day, then, you know... Let them go, I say. But the problem is that this appointment was always going to divide opinion, wasn't it? Because we're talking about somebody with zero managerial experience, somebody who's coming in from an assistant manager's role. It is a little bit underwhelming. I've said that in the past. But we've got to get behind Mikel Arteta because if we don't, you know, then, you know, we're not doing our jobs as supporters. And I think we spoke about this and touched on this on the last podcast. But, you know... Arsenal need a complete and utter rebuild. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if some of those players were to move on, would it? No, I agree. And um, a tweet that I out earlier, Harry, was that, look, if the players don't want to be there, then they don't want to be there. I think what Arteta has to do, number one, is sort of revolutionise the club and just say that a, a lot of these players, that um, it's fair to say that some of them haven't been put in a proper shift. I think you need to get young, hungry players that actually want to play for the shirt and this might sound ridiculous because they have been star players in the past, but even the likes of Aubameyang, Mesut Ozil, Lacazette, if they want to go, let them go. Get other players in. I mean, there's no point holding on to players just for, just for the name. Yeah, I mean, if, if we want to rebuild... It's not a happy place right now. Well, we need, well, we need some unity. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. If we want to rebuild, then we're probably going to need money. 
And if we need money, then probably the only way to raise that money is by letting some of the stars go. Now, initially, when you let those players go, there will be an uproar from the fans. And, and understandably so, because nobody wants to see their best players leave. It's something that we've had to witness on multiple occasions in the past, something that's really got on people's nerves, really upset people. Um, and, and it's what ultimately has led to people thinking that the club are not going in the, dire the, the right direction, I should say. But the problem here is that Mikel Arteta could almost be doomed before he's even taken charge of a game. He could already have lost half of the squad. And for me, you know, as professionals, that's just not acceptable. No, no, I mean, you're, you're spot on. And I think that Arteta needs... I don't know if he can, to be honest, Harry. I'm, I, he's, a, he's a young and experienced manager. And um, ultimately, Arsenal need a change of culture. Um, just a complete change of mentality around the club and I don't know if one single man can do that I think that comes from from the top down I think that comes from an ambition at, at the board level and then for the executives and some people are may, may be right to point out that maybe our tests are just coming in because he's almost a pawn that, that we can manipulate and he's just going to be a head coach he's not going to have a say to do with, with anything else but I'm hoping what I've read about his character um, that he's quite strong-willed, that he's quite, he knows exactly what he wants to do. I hope that can help him because um, if we noticed about Freddie's last game, uh, he came out and spoke against the, the club saying, you know, how can you sort of put me in this situation where I've got no coaches and yeah. they expect me to man? That's what I want to see. They, they, they want to see someone that's, that has Arsenal in the blood and is willing to call out those above him. For, for, for the wrong they do because let's be honest there is a lot wrong that that the board have done many many occasions absolutely I don't disagree with any of that and when you think about it you know and, and I was having this conversation with somebody earlier that you know we can sit there and we can say that maybe Lundberg's not up to it maybe Lundberg isn't ready to be a manager but ultimately he has been thrown under a bus he's been put in a position without the right tools to do his job he's taken over a sinking ship um, you know managed to get the win against West Ham but other than that it's been pretty poor um, and Arsenal obviously felt they needed to make the change but it remains to be seen whether this is the type of change that will lift everybody and that will inspire everybody again. And, you know, when you look at Saturday's opponents, Everton, of course, um, Duncan Ferguson has come in under similar circumstances. He's taken over from Marco Silva, who, who just wasn't cutting it. The fans wanted to see the back of him. But as I've already said, Everton got an immediate uplift by appointing Duncan Ferguson. If not because of his tactics, if not because of his coaching ability, just purely because of his passion for the club. And I feel like Freddie Lundberg was kind of in between that. Maybe the passion isn't as visible. I'm not saying he doesn't have it, but when it's not vi that visible and your tactics are a little bit iffy, then people are going to struggle to get behind you. At the very least, with Duncan Ferguson, you could say, he would have motivated people and inspired them. And it's going to be his last game at Goodison Park uh, as the manager on Saturday, we expect. Um, and you can imagine it's going to be an absolute cauldron of an atmosphere. They're coming into the back of it off a really, really disappointing defeat in the Carabao Cup, having fought back from 2-0 down. Uh, they ended up crashing out on penalties. Uh, but, you know, I, I just feel like Arsenal have just handled everything since Arsene Wenger left in the complete and utter wrong way. And all the problems that we're seeing now are, are not a result of one move or two moves or, you know, three moves even. It's it's the result of bad planning um, and bad management of the football club for quite some time now. Now, Mike, I wanted to ask you about the weekend's lineup. Of course, we expect Lundberg to still be picking the team, as I've already said, because at the time of recording, and this is going to be released Friday morning, um, at the time of recording, we still don't know that Arteta has been confirmed, uh, making it unlikely that he will take charge on Saturday just because of the timings. But we thought we'd found a better central defensive pairing in Socrates and Callum Chambers when we went to West Ham and we won our first game in 10, I think it was. But then we were completely battered by Manchester City. So is it back to the drawing board? Would you continue with those two? You know, Lundberg's got a difficult job here because he's essentially picking a team that is probably going to be different next week. So there's no longevity that needs to come in, in, into play here. How would you pick it, particularly at the back? Yeah, I think 
uh, as we spoke about in the last podcast, sorry, I think it's not so much necessarily who you pick at centre back, but because let's be honest, there's not an array of talent there. I think it's more important who they put in front of them to protect them. Um, so as, as I mentioned last time, when you're when, when you've got a tough game like that, I would probably go with, with a free midfield um, and just literally try and shore up that that defence. Um, but in in terms of centre backs, I, I, I would probably ch- I would stick sorry with with Chambers and Scratter because I think those are the most reliable. I think Louise has a mistake in him. And I know I know Chambers didn't necessarily put out the best performance, but let's not forget it was against a Man City team that, that are on, you know, are a spectacular champions and a great team with great attacking threat. I don't think Everton will pose the same problems. But as long as we get those three in front, then I think then you think to yourself, who are you gonna put in that three? So Jack is out. Um, we've got Guendouzi, Torreira, and is, is it maybe possibly time to put Joe Willock in? I know Brady Lindbergh's a big fan of him. I don't know. What would you do? It's a difficult one. It's a difficult one because I expect, and, and this sounds really bad saying this as an Arsenal fan because it shouldn't be the case, but we're going to Goodison Park on Saturday, in my opinion, um, not as the favourites. I think Everton are the favourites. They've seen, you know, I keep going on about the uplift. They beat Chelsea. They got a respectable draw at Old Trafford. Uh, so for me, they're on. They're in a better place than we are at the moment in terms of what's being handed over. What Duncan Ferguson is about to give to Carlo Ancelotti is in a better state than what Freddie Lundberg is about to give to Mikel Arteta. So, for that reason alone, I've got to say that Everton are the favourites, and I've got to say that I think defensively we're going to be put through our paces and we're going to be tested and we're going to be challenged. And you know, I doubt, and I've always doubted for quite some time now, whether Arsenal have the metal and the steel and the concentration levels to sit back and defend. And I just think that maybe we've got to play to our strengths. We've got to go out there, take the game to Everton, shell shock them early doors. That is what it's about for me. That is what Unai Emery was failing to do, in my opinion. Um, I think Lundberg's tried to do that based on his team selections, but again, it's failed. There's a lack of confidence. But I'm really interested to to see what he does at centre-back. I think I think David Lewis will probably come back in. Um just purely because I don't think things have improved much since he's gone out of the team. You know, we got the the result at West Ham, but the the game at, uh, against Manchester City was was terrible. Um, so I expect him to to probably come back in to the side there um, alongside Socrates. I would say I think Lundberg is going to go with the experience uh, away from home. It's probably what I would do as well. Um, Chambers. Did okay at West Ham, but I thought he was awful against Manchester City. He was getting caught out of position all the time. Runners uh, getting in behind him, Jesus in particular. And I think that he's probably going to go down the more experienced route. In terms of the midfield, I don't think you can bring Joe Willock in there um, and still have the same sort of attacking prowess. Now, I know people talk about Mesut Ozil and say he hasn't performed well. And I get that and I agree um, but I think Mesut Ozil on his day will give you a lot more than Joe Willock will on his day. And I think that the, the forward players will probably like to look behind them and, and see Mesut Ozil there. Um, he might not be providing assists at the moment, but it's not always that final pass. Sometimes it's just making the ball tick. It's just making us more fluid. And I think that he brings that to the team. Um, so, yeah, that that's what I would do. But looking at... Uh, of course, the rest of the selection, its re- like I said, it's really difficult uh, to guess. It's really difficult to predict. And it'd be interesting to see what Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang's attitude is like. Because, like you mentioned, lots of uh, talking points uh, in regards to the the brother and what he's been saying. And the fact that Aubameyang might want to leave. Mike, I'm going to put you on the spot. If Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang was to be the subject of a reasonable offer this January, would you take it? Sell him, sell him, Harry. I think I think while you can still while you can still uh, demand a fee for him because he is getting on, I would I would have to sell him. I mean, particularly if if all this stuff is going on and there is a divide between him and you know some of the other squad members, if there is a, an issue between him and the incoming manager, then it doesn't make sense to hold on to him, does it? And I know it sounds like we're probably going a step back before we're going to go forwards, but ultimately. Arsenal need a complete rebuild and none of these players currently in this side have performed at a level that gives them the right to to demand and the right to you know to to say things I know Aubameyang's been scoring goals but 
For me, his general play, you know, has left a lot to be desired at times as well. Sounds silly that I'm criticising him, but, you know, when you look at it in detail, I think him, Lacazette at times, Ozil especially, Xhaka, you know, there's so many senior players there that just don't do it consistently enough. Therefore, do they have the right to sit there and criticise an incoming manager? Sold a lot, man. Yeah, exactly. Honestly, Harry, like I have, I have no affiliation towards these players, and that some some of them have performed well in the past. But you know, you can't have a bad attitude running throughout the team. You can't have players that think that constantly think they're they're bigger than the manager, they're bigger than the club. I mean, we don't want to get into a to, into a situation where we're like Chelsea and we're changing managers literally every two seasons, and the players suddenly down tools when, when they feel like they don't like a manager or they're not adding anything. We don't want to get to that stage. So I think we really we do as get back the manager is king and if Mikel Arteta says Obama I don't want you to play because I don't think you fit my system then he doesn't play and then what's the, what, what's the point of having him we might as well sell him and to be honest having seen um, the, the quotes about Arteta he was very much from Pep's uh, school of football and I can't see him wanting Aubameyang to be a, st- a striker in, in that side because I don't know what you think but I don't think Aubameyang would start for Man City no I don't either I don't either. I think when you look at what what they've got, you know, the likes of um, Sergio Aguero, people like that. And I think that sort of philosophy demands players that are very fluid, that can interchange positions. And I know Aubameyang's operated from the flanks at times, but I think he's largely ineffective from the flank. I think he only does something when he drifts inside. And that's great and that's fine. You know, he picks up the space, but defensively that can cost you as well. So... You know, I don't think he's irreplaceable. I know he scores a lot of goals and I know we would desperately, desperately miss that. And I'm not saying he's not a good player, but at this moment in time, if he's got a problem, if he's got an issue and he doesn't want to be part of Arsenal Football Club, we need to do a massive rebuild anyway. And if selling him can bring some cash in and help us do that, then I'm all for it. Yeah, Harry, I want to ask you, what... What what positions would you sort of target? Like, say, if we are going for this rebuild, I know obviously everyone and their dog knows that we need a, a, a new centre back, maybe even two. But when you're looking at it, I think still we're, we're without a proper central midfielder. I'd like us to go out and target Dennis Sicario of uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach. I think he's a fantastic player. Um, I think he'd make Xhaka look very well because those two play together for Switzerland. Yeah. Um, and then if we do get if if we do get rid of a Bamiang, another striker, I think we're we're okay in the wing position now with Pepe and Martinelli. Stack, uh, we've got low. They've been injured. Um, you know they will eventually come back in Bellerin and Tierney, and then Leno. I've been very impressed with so. When when you look at it, you say rebuild, and th- there are a few key positions, a, a spine almost. But in terms of like the squad, I think people make it out to be a lot worse than it is. I do think we have some good players, and also don't, don't forget we've not had a manager that has been improving players. Like think about Agreed. Pochettino at Spurs, the amount of players that he made to look a lot better than they actually are, like Musa Sissoko, um, like Danny Rose uh, when he's when he was on his good side. I mean, he brought through Kane, Deli. If we have a player. If we have a manager, sorry, that can coach players to be better than they are, maybe the rebuild is not as big as we think. And I'm hoping, none of us know, obviously, but I'm hoping Arteta can be that. So that's what manager. Absolutely. Fingers crossed he is. And Mike, just to finish off your prediction for Saturday's game, and I know I've got to say this again because it is really important. It's very difficult to predict lineups. It's very difficult to predict scores, performances, because ultimately we expect it to be Ljungberg's last game in charge and he'll be kicking himself, won't he, if they all of a sudden pulled out a win at Goodenson Park. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I've, I'm going to go for a draw because I think it will be very cagey. Um, I'm going to go for a, I'm going to go for a high score in 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. I'm going to go for a 1-1, I think. Um, so, yep, don't forget, guys, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, do what you've got to do on the audio platforms, leave us a review. You know the drill by now. This podcast is sponsored by loserpool.com and we'll be back very soon with some more Arsenal-related content. Until then, take care.